This camera is so small that it could fit in your mouth and even get a shot from behind your teeth. This is the Insta360 GO 3, and this is the smallest action camera that can get you super immersive footage for anything that you're filming. It's as small as your thumb, but it could also clip into this unique action pod case that turns it into a traditional action camera. And it even has a flip up screen so that it can become a vlog camera. There are so many mounting options with the GO 3, which makes this a camera that you can use for any style of filming. Here we are on the Go 3, third version of this camera. Get a little behind the scenes of my studio. Check this out. Ultra wide lens, you can kind of see everything that's going on. I'm shooting with my FX6 over there, with the teleprompter, and this is the studio. So I just wanna say a special thanks to Insta360 for sponsoring this video. Now, if you've never seen the Go series of cameras, then let me give you just a quick rundown of what this camera is. It's a very unique action camera because of its size, but also the way that it records the footage. First, it's tiny. Here's the camera, but actually it's much smaller than this. This is the camera. It's the size of my thumb. And this is the new action pod case that comes with it. And for me, this is the smallest action camera that I've personally worked with. On the little thumb size camera, there's buttons to control your filming and photos. And also on the back of it, it's magnetic so that you can mount it in a bunch of different ways. Now, when it comes to actually editing the footage from the Go cameras, you can reframe your shots which is so unique for this style of camera because the Go cameras are shooting the full width of the sensor. You could see a shot right here. This is coming straight from the camera. And when you take this through Insta360's software or the app, you can output either a vertical, horizontal, even square frame, and it not only stabilizes your footage, but also keeps your horizon perfectly level. So here's some footage that's gone through the stabilization and outputted to be used in your video. Now, this is the Insta360 Go number three, and there's some huge improvements over the Go 2. However, before we get into all of the new features, I wanna talk about camera quality, and I wanna show you a comparison between the Insta360 Go 2 and the Insta360 Go 3. So the highest resolution that this new camera records is 2.7K. And so this is some of the footage straight out of camera, shot at 2.7K. And it looks pretty good, but I really wanted to see a side-by-side -side comparison of the Go 2 and the Go 3. So I put them both in the free frame mode. On the Go 2, it was called Pro Mode. On the Go 3, they've changed that to now Free Frame Mode. Here's the two shots side by side. And what I'm noticing is that the Go 3 is actually exposing the footage better, and it's also figuring out proper white balance. You could see here with the Go 2 that the sky in this footage has a blue color cast to it, whereas when you look at it next to the Go 3, the Go 3 looks a lot better. Also, you could see when I'm filming myself, the Go 3 does a much better job of exposing for me versus just the overall image, whereas the Go 2, it actually darkens my face in ways that I don't necessarily want it to. So overall, I found that the Go 3 has better auto image than the Go 2. And when you're using this camera, most of the time you're gonna be putting it in auto settings. However, when it comes to the resolution and quality, they're very similar. There's not a huge difference. However, if you are using it in the action camera mode and you're just outputting a nine by 16 or 16 by nine image, well then you do have access to more resolution in the 2.7K mode in the Go 3. Now, I actually shot an entire mountain climbing film using only the Go 2 and the built-in audio from the Go 2. So here's just a little bit of footage from that mountain climbing film, and you could see that it looks great for being such a small camera. And even this older model still holds up. The big thing about the Go camera series is that it's easy to film a ton of shots much quicker in these high-risk settings. So you could just pop the camera on your chest, on your head, wherever, and get a super easy shot without having to like set up all these gadgets to make it happen. That's why I really like the Go series of cameras when you compare it to higher resolution cameras that shoot at higher bit rates. However, this camera is all about speed and just ease of use. Anybody could pick up a Go 3 and start getting awesome footage just straight out of camera. So let's dig into all of the features of the Go 3 and what makes this specific camera unique. So the Go 3 uses internal memory just like the previous models. However, the Go 3 now has 128 gigabyte internal memory versus the 64 gigabyte internal memory on the Go 2. This allows you to film up to an hour and 37 minutes in that free frame mode. When you're in 2.7K mode, you get just under three hours of record time. So this is a huge advantage of this camera. On the Go 2 and the early model of the Go 2, the camera 
filled up super fast. But with this camera, you get a lot more record time before you have to go through and transfer the footage off of the camera. One of the things with this style of camera is there's no memory card. You can't put a memory card anywhere in the case or the actual camera itself. So to continue to record once the memory's full, you have to pull all the footage off. And the Go 3 has simplified this process because on the case, there is a USB-C, so you could just connect it directly to your computer and pull all the footage off. And so when you're shooting lots of data, you'll pull everything off, format the internal memory, and keep recording. On the older models, you had to use Bluetooth to connect to your phone to pull all the memory off, and Insta360 did make a little case that made it easier. However, it still was a clunky process, and when I was up climbing a mountain using the Go 2, it became one of the bottlenecks, so the Go 3 actually solves a lot of those problems with having larger internal memory and then if you do need to pull it off, it's much easier to get all the footage off of this camera. Now, the battery has also been improved. So when shooting with the Go 3 out of the action pod, so just the camera like this, you get a runtime of around 45 minutes. And when it's in the action pod, it runs 170 minutes. And to charge this little camera by itself, you just put it into the action pod and it's gonna start charging. And so if you run out of battery on the camera itself, you put it back in the case and then you can continue to use this camera for a couple more hours. Now to charge the case, which charges the camera, you just plug into the USB-C on the side of the camera. Now the action pod is super unique because it becomes a typical action camera when you put the Go 3 inside. But you get the added benefit of having a flip screen. So if you are someone who does vlogging and you wanna see yourself, you could easily flip the screen up and now you could vlog using this camera. And it just makes it super simple because the screen's right above the camera itself. And on this case, there's a few buttons to make the whole thing work. So on top, you have your record button, simple. On the side, you have a power button and you also have a quick menu button. On the other side, there's an unlock button, which is how you get the camera out of the case. So with the Go 3, it's never gonna fall out of the case no matter what you do because it's locked in there. So you use this unlock on the side of the case and then you could pull the camera out. And to put it back in, you can hear that it, there's a click when you put it back in because it uses both the magnet on the back of the Go 3 and the lock in there so that the camera will never come out. Now the screen itself is a touch screen and it's very similar to Insta360's other action cameras, the way that the whole menu structure is set up. So you could swipe down, you could swipe up, you could swipe left, you could swipe right. You could also swipe right in the middle of the screen. And also there's buttons that you could tap on the screen. So when you swipe in the middle, it's gonna change the mode. And you could also use the quick menu on the side of the camera to change the mode. There are 10 options. You have your standard photo mode, which in photo mode, you could change your ratio, your format, you could use a timer, and you can also change all your exposure settings. In video mode, you could very much do the same. You could change your ratio from vertical to horizontal. You could change your frame rate, which goes up to 30 frames per second in 2.7K and 50 frames per second in the other modes. And then you could also change your exposure and color settings, just swiping right on the screen. And you could switch between auto and manual controls for the camera. Now, when I use the Go camera, I almost always keep it on auto. However, it is good to have this option if there are times where the footage is like fluctuating exposure and you need to be able to lock in those settings, then you could switch it over to manual. But for the most part, when I'm working with this camera, I just leave it on auto and it usually gets a good shot for the scene that I'm shooting. Now when using video mode, there's also three levels of stabilization for this camera. And when you're using these levels of stabilization, the higher up you go, the more stable and a little bit more punched in the shot is, but also there's a little bit of delay on the screen. So if you're using level one, you don't really notice the delay, but when you're using level three, there is a significant delay. So you get a much more stable shot in video mode, but the screen itself is basically just for reference to see what the shot is, you're not gonna be seeing exactly what's happening because it's a little bit of a delay. Now the next option you have is free frame mode, which I explained earlier was pro mode on the Go 2. And this is where you're capturing the full width of the sensor and you could adjust everything later. The only other cameras that really have this capacity to shoot in this way are 360 cameras. And in free frame, you could rotate the camera 360 degrees around and no matter what, your horizon is always going to be level. Because it is capturing the entire sensor, it's gonna auto rotate the image even if you're spinning the camera during your shot. So you'll always have a perfectly level horizon no matter how much you twist that camera left or right. And to do this, you put it through flow state stabilization, which is in Insta360's app and the Insta360 software that you could download to your computer. And in the software, you're able to reframe your shot kind of like a 360 camera. It's not a ton of movement, but you could go from up to down or left to right, depending on how you have your footage framed. And it just gives you more creative flexibility 
on top of you don't have to worry about spinning the camera. So if your camera's rotating in any way, the horizon's always gonna be level and you could always just make small adjustments. So if your shot was a little bit off and you need to point down a little bit more, well, you could do that using this camera in editing versus being in a situation where the shot is pointed in the wrong direction. There's been times where I've mounted a camera on my head when I'm climbing or my chest. I get back, I look at the footage, and I notice that the shot is kind of looking up and you don't actually see what I'm doing. Well, with the Go 3, I could actually reframe that down slightly and I'd be able to get a better shot. This is probably one of the most useful things about this camera. You just know you're pointing in the right direction and then later in your edit, you could go through and make sure that the shot's perfect by just reframing it slightly and putting on the stabilization. Now, another mode that's built into this camera is time-lapse mode. So you set the interval of how often you want the camera to take a photo and it automatically builds a time-lapse for you. Another option is time shift, which is very similar to time-lapse. However, this is meant for moving time-lapse or hyperlapses. Now another mode that you have access to in this camera is slow motion and this camera can record up to 120 frames per second in 1080p. So if you do need super slow motion you could do it with this camera. There's a loop recording mode which allows for continuous video recording and when it runs out of space it will continue to record and erase the oldest footage first. So you could just keep the camera rolling for as long as you need it to until you get the shot that you want and turn off the camera. Now another mode is star lapse. So if you're outside at night and you wanna get a time lapse of the stars moving, well, this camera has a bunch of settings built in to be able to capture that even with how small this camera is. Now there's also two additional photo modes. The first is interval mode. So this is kind of like a time lapse where it's gonna take a photo at a set interval. However, in this mode, it just takes photos. It doesn't actually create that time lapse for you. And the other photo mode is HDR. So if you wanna do HDR photos, you could do that built into this camera. So a ton of ways to use this camera just beyond being like an action camera in standard photo and video mode. Now there are a few other features that are unique to the Go 3 over the previous models. So when you swipe down on this camera, you bring up the main menu and this has some additional settings. So one of those is pre-recording. And so when you turn this on, the camera's gonna continually record and you could set it for 10 seconds, 15 or 30. So when you press record, the 10, 15 or 30 seconds before are automatically gonna be saved. So if you are using this in a setting where things are happening fast, you'll never miss the shot because you have that footage from before you pressed record. Now, another option is timed recording. This is pretty unique. You could set a specific time that you want this camera to start recording or take a photo or one of the other modes. So in this advanced menu, you turn on timed recording and then you set what time you want it to start. So this camera is synced to time of day because it hooks to your phone. So you could set up that you want the camera to start recording at say five o'clock. So you'll set the specifications, you'll set the mode that you wanna use, and you'll set the duration of how long you want the camera to record or if you want it to take multiple photos. And then once it's done, you could set it up to repeat on set intervals. So this way you could leave the camera, go do something else, and you know that the camera's gonna start recording at a specific time or take a photo. Now one thing that's really unique about the Action Pod is that it stays connected even if you pull the camera out. It uses a Bluetooth connection. So as soon as you pull the camera out, you could still see what you're filming on the action pod. So it becomes a wireless display. And also you could control all your settings about your Go 3 from the action pod when they're disconnected. So overall, this makes it a lot easier to use this camera because you can mount it somewhere and then look at your action pod and be able to see your shot, see your framing and actually trigger a recording. Because this camera is to be used in all these unique ways and put in interesting places and mounted all over the place, well, this just opens up a whole bunch of possibilities because on previous models and on other cameras, you have to use your phone to be able to get this wireless video feed. And a lot of times that's just kind of a pain to always be using your phone. This automatically connects as soon as you turn it on, pull the camera out, put it over here. And if they are separated, you could turn on both and they're gonna start working immediately so you could see exactly what you're doing. Now the way this camera is only 35 grams and the size is very similar to the Go 2. However, it's not the same. So this is one thing that I noticed when I started playing around with this in the different mounts. The Go 3 is slightly larger around the edges. 
So that means if you're someone who uses the GoTo and you have a bunch of mounts that are specifically designed for the size of the GoTo, they're not gonna work. It's just slightly bigger and it does have a little bit different design. It's easier to grip and also on the back you now have this clip which allows it to work with some different mounts. So the back of the Go 3 is magnetic and Insta360 has this pendant that goes under your shirt. So this allows you to get those cool POV shots of your hands stretched out in front of you for whatever you're doing. And you just simply put the pendant on and then whenever you wanna use the Go 3, pop it on your chest, click the center button, start recording. Now, something new with the Go 3 is this added wedge. And so you could flip this wedge either direction. So if you wanna record higher or lower versus just straight out, it gives you just a slightly different angle depending on what you're doing. And the big thing about the size is that the camera doesn't draw a lot of attention to yourself. It's just this little camera right in the center of your chest. It is white, so I wear black shirts. It is very noticeable. But you could use this in a lot of ways to just get some unique angles and not have to worry about having this big camera out all the time. It's pretty wild when I was shooting the mountain climbing film using the GoTo, and I was just filming videos vlogging like this or just putting it here or just like setting it over here on a rock and be able to get a bunch of shots to tell my story. Now a few other mounts that are super useful, there's one for your hat and you can record that view from your head. And there's also now mounts built specifically for the action pod. So there's a new clip that comes with this camera that is both magnetic and it has clips to secure it. And this mount has a two prong or quarter 20 mount so that you can attach it to a ton of other accessories like the two in one tripod, which is a little tabletop tripod, but also can become a selfie stick. There's also a new mount called a monkey tail, which can basically wrap around anything. And then you could have this camera hooked onto something super quick. Now this new mount clips on the bottom of the action pod, but also with the new design of the Go 3, you'll see that there's two mounting points on the Go 3 itself. You could use the Go 3 with this mount as well. And when you put it in, it clips in, so there's no chance of it falling off. So there's gonna be a bunch of accessories coming out that allow you to just clip this in and know that it's secure when you mount it to something like the front of your bike or like a helmet mount or any other mount that you're using in situations where it's bouncing around a lot and the magnet might pop off. Now another thing with the Go 3 is that the audio has been upgraded. There are two mics that are built in for this camera that are set up for vlogging. All right, so let's do an audio test with both of these cameras. They're just in the case and I'm gonna record on both. One, two, three. Okay, now we're both recording. One of the big things though, besides audio, is the, just the usability of the Go 3 versus the Go 2. The Go 2 is just feels a lot more clunky and the way you connect and everything it just, it doesn't work as well as the Go 3, because the Go 3, it just automatically connects as soon as you turn on the camera and you always have that external monitor. So huge advantage of the Go 3, and also I have a screen, so I'm looking at myself, I can see how I'm vlogging. But as you could tell, I'm switching between the audio between the 3 and the 2, so you could hear the difference between both of these cameras. All right, so now I just pulled both these cameras out and I'm just testing the audio without the case. So here's the difference, here's the Go 3, and here's the Go 2. And you know, there's some birds chirping in the background. There's someone mowing their lawn in the distance, a plane in the distance, and this is what the audio sounds like between the two. But it's just little pinhole microphones, and if wind hits it, you're gonna hear that wind. However, like I said earlier, you could still capture usable audio with these cameras. So when I was climbing the mountain and using this camera, I did all of my audio straight from the camera. I really just used this camera for everything. So here's just a sample from the Go 2 of audio when I was up on the mountain. So what the crux of the climb is, is basically the hardest section. So when we're climbing up these mountains, there's usually one thing, whether it's an ice climbing pitch, a rock climbing pitch, some sort of exposure, there's always a crux. So depending on the setting and depending on what's going on around you, it is usable. Now another big thing about the Go 3 is that it's waterproof. So the Go 3 itself can go down to 16 feet. Now the Action Pod is not waterproof, but it's water resistant. So you'll be able to use this for things like snowboarding or like light rain, things like that. But you definitely don't wanna just dunk this case into the water. And if you wanna control this camera without actually touching it, you can use voice commands to do all your controls. So for me, the big upgrades are better image quality, extended battery life, more internal memory, better heat dispersion so that it doesn't overheat, the new action pod with the flip screen, 
and some of these additional video modes because it just opens up the flexibility of how you could use this camera. Now include a link down below the description to where you can find more about the Insta360 GO 3. And next, you should really check out this video right here, which is my climbing film using the GO 2. So you could really see how you could use one of these cameras to shoot basically anything and how useful this could be depending on the setting that you're in. So I'll see you over there.